We are back uh, on this Tuesday, 13th day of July, 2021. Welcome to Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Thanks for starting your day with us here on the NCW Live channel. I hope that you ended your Monday with us on the NCW Live channel with the news uh, with Grant and Eric. You see the haze uh, behind me from our cross cam, and we're going to be dealing with some widespread haze and smoke. There are some fires. They're quite a ways away from us as the crow flies, but with the lid on, with the high pressure ridge, and there's no real place for the smoke to go. We've been through this before. You know, the smoke comes up, it hits the lid, and it slowly comes back down uh, again. The air quality is okay right now, but uh, pretty much all this rest of this week, until they get a real beeline on these fires, we're going to be dealing with some hazy and smoky conditions. Um, the fire up near uh, Mazama, it's called the Varden Fire. It's about 10 miles west of Mazama, about 20 miles west of of uh, Winthrop is burning pretty good and they have another fire, uh, forest fire up in the Nespilo area. Uh, and so the smoke is going to start slowly drifting down and paying us a visit. It's going to be hot again today. The heat advisory continues uh, right through Wednesday, uh, Wednesday night as a matter of fact, and then that gets replaced by a fire weather watch, which goes into effect tomorrow uh, through Thursday because we're going to see the winds picking up a little bit as a cold front begins to move in uh, on Wednesday and Thursday. It's going to cool us down to back to normal temperatures. We're talking upper 80s, right around 87 or 88 is our normal high this time of the year. Uh, it's still going to be uh, cooler, but it's going to cool back down to normal, so it's going to feel strange. In any event, forecast details are coming up. Another hot day yesterday. We'll be near triple digits again today, if not past that. Details are coming up. A lot of news to get to. On this Tuesday, sports, uh, the Wenatchee Apple Sox will be in Bellingham at Joe Martin Stadium to take on the Bells. Also, we have highlights from the Home Run Derby last night at Coors Field in Denver. And we'll talk a little Seahawks, too, as they get ready for a training camp at the VMAC. And uh, unlike last year, fans can go this year. We'll give you some of those details as well. Plus, the obscure holiday today in history, uh, Mike McNighty's got an opinion, some celebrity birthdays. And we do this every Tuesday. We visit with our friends at the Wenatchee Apple Sox, Joel Norman, the voice of the Apple Sox, the radio voice, Stormin' Joel Norman, uh, joined me yesterday for our videotaping, and also Chase Grillo, a big starting pitcher for the Wenatchee Apple Sox from Kennewick, had a chance to join us as well. We'll have that, that uh, conversation with Chase and Joel in the back half of the hour, three minutes into our show, 73 degrees, smoky and hazy. Let's begin our festivities uh, with our cameras around the valley, and we begin with the cross camera, and it's a pretty good idea of the smoke and the haze. Again, the farther north you go, the thicker the smoke and the haze is going to be because the fire is to the north of us. The one that's closest to us is the, what they're calling the Varden Fire. That's the one about uh, 20 miles west of, uh, of uh, Winthrop. And that is starting to seep down into our area. Highway 20, the North Cascades Highway is still closed. They're using the highway as a, uh, as a station for the firefighting equipment and apparatus. So. You can't drive over Highway 20 uh, right now. Camera number two, it's Megan's Choice. You can see what we're looking at. We're looking at, well, there's a pretty good view of the haze. That's from the Chelan Butte, I believe, looking back towards the Waterville area. Uh, though you can just barely see a little sliver of the Columbia River down below. If we turn that camera a little bit to the left, you would be, gradually be able to see the Chelan Valley proper, but you can see pretty hazy and pretty smoky up on the plateau near Waterville. Also a little windy. You see that camera's moving around a little bit in the breeze. Here in the Wenatchee Valley we have a wind, uh, north-northwest wind at 16 miles an hour. Camera number three. Good morning to Kashmir from, I want to say, Steins. That is correct. Uh, I can always tell that because I can see the golf course. Hello, golf course. Hello, fairgrounds. Hello, orchards growing them pears and them apples. Cherries, I think, are pretty much past the peak. Uh, of course, the, the, the upper elevations, uh, they have a longer cherry season, say the Wenatchee Heights and the Stemilt area. On the lower elevations, where the heat can be a little more concentrated, the cherries have a tendency to ripen up pretty quick. And I hope the oppressive heat wave we had a couple weeks ago didn't do too much damage to the cherries. In any event, good morning, Kashmir. Thanks for starting your day with us. And camera number four. Billy Goat looks really hazy. Again, we've talked about this before. That's a lot of information on that frame. That camera is zoomed way back, and if it wasn't so hazy, you'd see a whole bunch of, well, planet Earth, miles and miles and miles and miles. But as you can see, since that's up near the Pateras area, um, it's pretty hazy. 
uh, and pretty smoky up there. That's much closer to the fires, both in the uh, Nespelum area and up near the Winthrop area. So you're dealing with some pretty hazy and smoky conditions. I'll, uh, before the show is over, I'll pop on uh, the website that monitors the air quality and we'll see what, what is the air quality up to the north of us. And in any event, from our Billigo camera looking out over Omac and Okanagan County area. Okay, six minutes after the hour, yes, fire weather watch. Uh, first of all, we still have the heat advisory. That hasn't changed. That's going to go until 8 o'clock tomorrow. Then that's going to be replaced with a fire weather watch from Wednesday afternoon through uh, Thursday evening. It's the combination we've talked about many times before. Warm temperatures, windy conditions, very low relative humidity. Uh, so the re relative humidity is going to go bone dry on Wednesday and Thursday afternoon as a cold front moves through the area. And it's going to increase the relative humidity in some areas, but it's also going to pick up on the winds. We are going to cool down, but things are just so tender dry. and We've been so hot this summer. We had 98 yesterday. Our normal high is 87. So we've gone 26 consecutive days now with our afternoon high temperature above average. Every day this summer, our afternoon high temperature has been above average. And our average daily high temperature for July, you add them all up for the 12 days that are in the books, 95.6 degrees our average daily high temp for this month. That is hot. And so we are set up for any kind of fire that's either already existing or any new fire start that gets going, be it forest fires or wildland fires or grass fires or whatever, they could get moving. So, yeah, fingers crossed. Fire weather watch through Thursday evening. Okay, from the National Weather Service, here we go again. Uh, into the triple digits, 105 might be a bit much, but it's going to be plenty warm for most people. It's already at 73 degrees. Not a lot of wind today, just a lot of haze and a lot of smoke, and it's going to stay with us really through the rest of the forecast period. Sunny and hot on Wednesday. Now Thursday, Wednesday night into Thursday is when this cold front comes in. The wind is going to pick up in intensity. That's where we have the fire weather watch. It's going to cool down to normal on Friday. You see that 87 degree mark? That's our normal high for the middle of July, and then we go right back up again into the 90s to the upper 90s. By the time we get to the weekend, it has been one of the hottest summers anybody can recall in this area, and it will continue for the foreseeable future. Again, lots of haze and lots of smoke from the wildfires to the north and to the northeast of us is going to start rolling down into the Wenatchee Valley and stick around for a while. Not thick, oppressive smoke, but uh, it's certainly going to be noticeable. And the farther north you go, the more smoke you'll be dealing with. Okay, that's your forecast at eight minutes after the hour. We're going to come right back and do uh, do your news uh, news for you because we have a lot of news to get to on this Tuesday. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Kids are resilient. I just love their energy. They bounce back so quickly. I love the stories they tell. I love just their charisma, their character. Um, I love to see that subtle smile that you pull out of a kid, you know, when you, you start talking with them about something they really like. I just love what I do, and I can't imagine I would be as happy doing anything else. Things have changed in the motorsports industry. Short supply and high demand have emptied showrooms. But what hasn't changed are the experts at Doghouse Motorsports. They are here to help you reserve the machine of your choice. Stop by and check out the latest 2022 Husqvarna motorcycles, UBCO, and intense electric vehicles, and other new additions to the Doghouse Motorsports family of high quality products. Over the last year and a half, the industry has absolutely changed, but the Doghouse is still your best option for all your power sports needs. Nine minutes after the hour, 74 degrees outside of our studios. We still have that heat advisory in effect until noon tomorrow. And then we have a fire weather watch, which goes into effect tomorrow as well. It's going to be hazy and smoky and hot for the rest of the week with some windy conditions expected on Thursday. All right, your headlines. Two Wenatchee brothers are dead after a shooting on Saturday that is still under investigation by Wenatchee police. Austin Lee Jones, 32 years old, and Jacob K.S. Jones, 36 years old, were found dead in their home from gunshot wounds Saturday evening. First responders were called to their home in the 500 block of Medhouse Street at about 5.50 on Saturday afternoon after a friend arrived 
and discovered one of the men. Police say they found the Jones brothers in the same bedroom, both dead from gunshot wounds. Chelan County Coroner Wayne Harris says the deaths are under investigation. Police say despite the ongoing case, there appears to be no threat to the public. Early on Saturday morning, the Chelan County Sheriff's Office said the man apparently intoxicated jumped into the lake at about 4 a.m. near the Grand View on the Lake Hotel. When he did not resurface, the unidentified man's wife called 911. Rescue swimmers were quickly able to find the man, but efforts to revive him were unsuccessful. A California man uh, expected, uh, suspected, I should say, of using bogus credit cards to steal about $16,000 from Wenatchee Valley 810, 810 machines, or well, he's now, now in custody. 19-year-old uh, Fabio Chichiu has been identified as the person that you see in this photograph. It was taken from a Cashman Valley Bank cash machine in February of 2019. He was charged by warrant with first degree theft plus nine counts of identity theft for allegedly using information stolen by credit card skimmers to create fake cards and then withdraw cash. He was finally arrested last month in Placitia, California. Now, Wenatchee police say they worked with federal agencies to identify Chichi Yu from their photo that, we, that you just saw and they found him in a Homeland Security database. He's believed to be a Romanian national who entered the country illegally as a juvenile. He's charged with similar crimes in Kitsap County. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office, they're looking for a man who they say stole a donation box from Bill's Gas in Chelan late last month. Surveillance video appears to show the man shoving the box inside of his jacket on June 29th. The Sheriff's Office said the box held money being raised to help a child and family in need. The suspect is described as about six foot four inches tall with large holes in his earlobes. Anybody with information is being asked to call 663-9911 and ask for Sergeant Chris Foreman. Well, the North Cascades Highway, as I mentioned at the start of the show, it remains closed this morning to better enable firefighters to respond to a pair of wildfires. There were partial closures of the highway Sunday that at times backed up traffic on the North Cascades Highway. The Washington State Department of Transportation says it's uncertain when the highway will reopen, so travelers are being advised to use Highway 2, Stevens Pass. The biggest of the fires that were reported Sunday is being called the Varden Fire. It's about 20 miles west of Winthrop. That fire has burned about 75 acres of timbered land. A nearby fire on Delancey Ridge has burned about 30 acres of grass, brush, and timber. That historic heat wave that we had late June and into the early part of this month has claimed six known victims in north central Washington. The temperatures, which topped out at 113 degrees in Wenatchee on June 29th, contributed to the deaths of one person in Douglas County and five in Okanagan County, all died in homes which lacked air conditioning. So far, 91 people throughout the state of Washington are believed to have perished from this year's record heat. All of our area, of course, is still under a heat advisory through Wednesday. And finally, three unbuilt parcels of property owned by the same developer will soon join the city of Wenatchee. The Wenatchee City Council last week approved annexation of what's called the DJML property. That's about eight acres on Horse Lake Road overlooking the Columbia, named after the LLC that bought it in 2020. Neighborhood and Community Services Coordinator Brooklyn Holton says the measure becomes effective two months from now. Uh, there is a single owner of three parcels off of Horse Lake Road. Uh, they submitted their application in March. Um, it was approved and then the resolution 2021 at the end of June was approved by council to uh, enter into the public hearing and adopt the ordinance. Uh, the, because it's just one owner, owner we've had 100% uh, value in terms of the signature. So the county has certified um, and provided all the documentation. After this process, there's a 60-day uh, waiting period for the effectiveness of this ordinance so that agencies and anybody that has interest in the property is able to update their information, any billing or um, GIS or mapping applications. Um, and then at that point, it would probably <clears throat> uh, it'd go effective in September, and then there would just be a census uh, completion at the end of that. There's uh, no development on the property right now. It's vacant. Um, and so I think the, um, yeah, the owners submitted that for, and we didn't get any, um, the value for that one um, 
wasn't high enough to bring anybody else in, so um, that's why we kept with that one owner. So tonight, um, you'd be approving Ordinance 2021-21 to um, essentially formalize the annexation process um, and bring them into the city after the 60-day uh, effective period. And for those watching at home, this is the third time the council has seen this because we see it at the 10% and when we set the public hearing. So this is the third time that we have seen the DJML LLC annexation. And that is what's making news on this Tuesday. We'll be right back out of the game with more news coming your way at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock. We believe having an informed uh, audience is an important thing for the NCW Life channel. And with a preview of some of the stories for tonight's news, here's the anchor, Grant Olson. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, the price of a new home in the Wenatchee market continues to skyrocket. We'll tell you the latest, latest median home price. Triple digit heat expected today and then a cool down by the end of the week. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Granstrom will have a look at the latest from the Apple Sox as well as the home run derby at last night's Major League Baseball All-Star Game. That and all the day's news coming up tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thanks, Grant. Don't forget, we'd love to hear from you, our viewers. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com. You can go to our Facebook page and check in that way using Facebook Messenger, or you can go to our homepage, ncwlife.com, and right on the front page is a form you can fill out and drop us a note that way. 17 minutes after the hour, after a quick break, we're talking All-Star. The 91st Midsummer Classic is tonight in Denver. We'll talk about that, plus highlights of the Home Run Derby. We'll talk some Apple Sox baseball and sports and in the interview section in the back half of the program, plus the obscure holiday today in history, some celebrity birthdays and opinion from Mike Mad Dog Magnotti. You're watching a Tuesday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. What you're doing is ridiculous. Well, I mean, you might as well throw up a screen door to block the summer smoke. Sometimes it gets when warm. When we breathe in the wildfire smoke, we are ingesting hazardous chemicals such as acetic acid and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. A lot of bad stuff, okay? Well, yeah, that's why we... The cardboard ain't gonna cut it. So... Go to shalampud.org slash save today. Play ball! Wenatchee Apple Sox Baseball is back on the NCW Life Channel. Join us for live play-by-play -play coverage of the Apple Sox Friday, July 16th as they host the Cascade Collegiate All-Stars at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. Pre-game takes the air at 6.30 with a first pitch at 6.35. It's the All-Stars and the Apple Sox as we celebrate summer one inning at a time live on your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel. We are back at it on this hazy Tuesday morning at 18 minutes after the hour. Sports baseball celebrated the long ball last night, the annual home run derby at Coors Field. They didn't do it last year, of course, because of COVID-19. So the Mets' Pete Alonso was eager to defend his title amongst eight competitors. He eased his way into the finals to face Baltimore's Trey Mancini. The polar bear, which is what they call him, would not be denied. Like a countdown. Three to win it. Two to win it. He's not missing. One more to win it as Alonzo comes out of the timeout and walks it off. What a finish. Alonzo defends his title. The 2021 Derby champion put the belt on again. What a show. That right there was Woo. impressive. Ken Griffey Jr. giving him the trophy, but Pete Alonzo, he made that look easy. Wow. Alonzo had 23 home runs in the final round, so he had them all up uh, all on Monday night. He had 74 home runs. The 91st Midsummer Classic is tonight at Coors Field in Denver. First pitch 
at 4.30. Seattle's lone representative in tonight's All-Star game is in Denver, but he's not going to play. You say Kikuchi was activated from the COVID-19 injured list on Monday. Uh, following an issue over the weekend, he's fully vaccinated. He tested negative twice, so he can attend the festivities. He's just not going to play. Kikuchi has a message, though, for you Mariner fans out there. Um, very honored to be here today to represent the Seattle Mariners. Um, I just want to thank the fans uh, for all your support and always being there for me. Um, and I'm looking forward to the second half of the season as well. Kikuchi is 6-4 and four so far this year in 16 starts. He has a 3.48 earned run average. This is his very first selection to the Major League Baseball All-Star team. He was a three-time selection when he played professional baseball in Japan. While baseball was honoring the home run last night at Coors Field, the Mariners were drafting, concentrating on pitching in round two of the Major League Baseball draft after taking shortstop Edwin Arroyo. In round number two on Monday, Seattle drafted four right-handed pitchers, including high schoolers Michael Morales in the third round, Colin Davis and Spencer Packard, outfield selections by Seattle to go along with catcher Andy Thomas out of Baylor. The West Coast League, by the way, had 18 former players selected in the baseball draft Sunday and Monday, one of which a former Apple Sox, J.T. Schwartz, played here in the summer of 2018 out of UCLA. He was selected by the New York Mets as a potential future first baseman in the fourth round. The 2021 version of the Wenatchee Apple Sox are on their way to Bellingham this morning, three game series with the Bells tonight. Wenatchee is 10 and 17 overall on the season. They're 0 and 3 to start the second half of the schedule. The Bells come in at 13 and 17 overall, but Wenatchee took two of three in their first meeting of the season. The radio voice of the Wenatchee Apple Sox, Joel Norman, and release, relief pitcher Chase Grillo join me prior to uh, their leaving for Bellingham. And Joel told me this is a must-win series for Wenatchee. Absolutely what needs to happen. You know, Bellingham, of course, being a division rival, they've always been. And it's someone who you've got to take these games from because, uh, you know, you hope it to get one of three from Corvallis here. It didn't happen. But, you know, next team up, it's Bellingham, a team who the Apple Sox did take two of three. They had a chance to sweep earlier this season. So now the tough part is going to Joe Martin Field. It's a place where the last two times the Apple Sox went there, they had to salvage the series. So two wins in their last six games there at Joe Martin. So it is a little tricky, but it's imperative. And I think this team is equipped to do it because they've had some success on the road. Road wins against Catlett's, Port Angeles. And I think a lot of times those can be a nice breath of fresh air going on the road, changing up the pace a little bit. They love playing at home, like I mentioned. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's just a change of pace. And like you talked about with those road trips and the bus rides, you know, that just brings the team closer together with each one that you go on. So I think this is a really exciting opportunity coming up this week for the Apple Sox. And yeah, they were swept by Corvallis, but I don't think that's something that's going to weigh on them once they're in Bellingham in a couple days. And you've already played Bellingham, so you have a general idea of the strengths and weaknesses of the club, right, Chase? Yes, yeah. We're going to come in and just attack, and we know our pitching can get the job done. Our hitters are going to step up to the plate. And like Joel is saying, uh, nothing like playing at home. You get the energy from the crowd, and that helps. But being on the road, there's nothing sweeter than beating somebody at their own plate. Uh, my complete conversation, by the way, with Storm and Joel Norman and Chase Grillo will come up a little bit later on this morning on this very edition of Wake Up Financial Valley. You can listen to Joel's call of tonight's game throughout North Central Washington on Sunny FM. As far as the rest of the West Coast League schedule for tonight, there it is, 635. You got Port Angeles at Ridgefield. Corvallis will entertain the driveline entitlers. I just love that. Medford visits Bend, and Yakima Valley will host the Highline Bears. Walla Walla will be in Portland tonight to take on the Pickles at 7.05. Seahawks have announced that fans will be returning when they open up training camp for the first time since 2019. Of course, fans couldn't be there because of COVID last year. A total of 12 public training camp practices will be open to fans beginning July 28th and goes through August 12th. 11 of those will be held at the VMAC, the Virginia Mason Athletic Center. The team will also host a special off-site practice at Lumen Field on August 8th. So if you're interested in attending Seahawks training camp, presented by Safeway, I might add. you got to register through the team's website at seahawks.com slash training camp beginning tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Registration is a first-come, first-served basis. And unfortunately, because of the NFL's training camp policy, fans and players will still have to remain at least 20 feet apart, which means no autographs, but it's at least you can go better than not. And those are just some of the games that people are playing 
at 25 minutes after the hour. As far as the obscure holiday is concerned, I had two to choose from. They're both food related. Today is National Beans and Franks Day, a summertime staple, but French fries. Who doesn't love French fries? In fact, potatoes are the most popular vegetable in this country, and the reason for that, or one of the biggest reasons, is French fries. Today is National French Fry Day. Of course, French fries were not invented by the French. They were invented by uh, folks in Belgium who started the idea of frying potatoes back in the 17th century, and it was just kind of a Belgian thing. It kind of just sat there until World War I. That's when American soldiers stationed in Belgium were getting into these treats and they loved them. Hey, fried potatoes are very tasty. Well, the official language of the Belgian army is French and confusion set in because American soldiers started calling them French fries even though they weren't actually part of France. They're, they're Belgian uh, by terminology. Of course, the United States it's a, it's a staple with your burger or your hot dog. You always have your French fries, but some people dip them in ketchup, others like tartar sauce, others like them just plain. Uh, in Canada, they normally cover it in gravy. That's the tradition there. In the Middle East, they wrap it in a pita shell. Uh, so French fries are not only a comfort food, but quite versatile as well. Fun facts about French fries. Americans eat about 30 pounds of French fries per person per year. But we got nothing on Belgium. Belgium consumes more potatoes and more French fries than any other country in the world. Well, I said like 30 pounds per person. In Belgium, they eat about 165 pounds of French fries a year. That's a lot. Of course, French fries did play a major role in making potatoes the number one vegetable in this country. McCain Foods. McCain Foods is the world's largest producer of French fries. They're frozen, they're cooked in factories, and then uh, they're frozen, and then they're reheated in restaurants or at homes. One in three French fries on this planet was manufactured by McCain Foods. Happy National French Friday. I'm sure there's lots of fast food joints and restaurants all over the place offering special deals on French fries. Go get them. All right, today in history, considered by many the worst riots in this country's history, the New York City draft riots broke out in New York. Uh, they had the draft, of course, and opponents of conscription, well, there were a lot of them. Basically, the Irish, of course, for 300 bucks, you could buy yourself out of having to serve in the Union Army, but a lot of people couldn't. That was a ton of money back in 1863, and the Irish, since they were poor, felt that they were being unfairly singled out to be drafted into the Union Army, and they were also mad because they figured when they go into the Army, um, the blacks throughout New York City would take their jobs, and so what began initially as, uh, as a protest to express anger at the draft, it turned into a race riot with uh, predominantly Irish immigrants attacking blacks throughout the city, the official death toll, 119 people died. Houses were burned. Not good. Considered by many the worst riot in this country's history, just by death toll. That's a lot of people, 158 years ago today. Happy birthday to the Hollywood sign. They're on the second Hollywood sign. That's the original one, Hollywood Land, dedicated on June 13th, 1923, the last four letters were dropped when it was renovated in 1949. It was dedicated on the state in 1923. It was only supposed to stand for 18 months and then it started falling apart. And finally, in 1978, the original sign was torn down and replaced with that sign that you see there. So happy birthday to the iconic Hollywood sign. If it's not smoggy in Hollywood, you can see it. Most days it's 98, well, the sign, the location is 98 years old. The sign that you see there now was dedicated in 1978 after the original one was basically torn down, fallen apart. Uh, 44 years ago today, the lights went out in New York City. Now, there were two significant blackouts 12 years apart. In 1965, they had a blackout that lasted about 24 hours and everything went okay. Everybody helped each other. People were trapped in elevators and subways and such, but it wasn't so bad. But when the lights went out on a steaming hot night on July 13th, 1977 in the Big Apple, it was another story altogether. After 24 hours, 
uh, of no power, fires and looting. And here's a, here's a contemporary news report from the blackout of 1977 from ABC News. This is an ABC News special report with Roger Grimsby in New York and Barbara Walters in Washington. New York City went totally dark last night, and tonight large parts of the city still are without power. Thousands were stranded in the city when airlines, commuter ra trains, and subways were knocked out of service. Thousands of others, all ages, took to the streets just for the fun of it. After all, New York City gets blacked out only once every 12 years. And there were thousands of others who took to the streets to plunder and to pillage. Over 2,500 looters and vandals arrested during the first eight hours of the blackout. Many more got away. The looters concentrated on small businesses, mostly in the poorer sections of the city, where unemployment and crime are chronically high. There were more than 40 serious fires. Two firemen died. Some of the fires were deliberately set, compounding the problem, false alarms, 1,100 of them. Mayor Beam summed it all up by calling it a night of terror. How did it all begin on one of the hottest, steamiest nights of the year in New York City? Well, to the north, towering thunderstorms jolted the rich suburb of Westchester County. Lightning knocked out transmission lines, setting off a cascading series of power station failures. And lights began flickering for 10 million residents in the metropolitan New York area. No lights, no refrigeration, no appliances, no air conditioning, no television, no elevators, and in some of the worst cases, no water. The city was closed down for the day. By mid-afternoon, more than 2,700 persons had been arrested, most of them for looting. One policeman had been shot. As many as 78 policemen have been injured so far. Uh, in the end, uh, here are your statistics on the New York City blackout of 1977. 1,616 stores were damaged in looting and rioting. 1,037 fires were responded to, 14 multiple alarm fires, and 3,776 people were arrested in the New York City blackout of 1977. And finally, I watched this all day on uh, July 13th, 1985, Live Aid took place at Wembley Stadium in London and JFK Stadium in Philadelphia with almost every significant artist in contemporary music participating to help the starving people in Africa, Live Aid. And oh, it was kind of kind of disappointing in some respects. Some people were great, others not so much. But Live Aid, it was history, July 13th, 1985. And finally, at 33 minutes after the hour, birthdays number four on the list of the all-time highest grossing domestic box office stars, Harrison Ford is 79 years old. 79, I kid you not. Uh, American, he was great in American Graffiti, and then of course uh, he was in that, that space movie franchise George Lucas created that forgot the name of it. Uh, he was also in Apocalypse Now, of course, the Indiana Jones franchise, Patriot Games, got an Academy Award nomination for Witness, The Fugitive, Air Force One. They're making another Indiana Jones movie as we speak. Happy 79th birthday, Harrison Ford. Also 79 years old today, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Roger McGuinn, the leader and the founder of the legendary rock and roll group, The Birds, and also one of the great guitarists of all time. We want to wish Roger McGuinn a happy 79th birthday. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Erno Rubik, the guy who invented that, the thing that drives me nuts, the Rubik's Cube. Erno Rubik, Hungarian uh, by birth, uh, the inventor of the Rubik's Cube. It made him a very rich man. Uh, they sold over 350 million Rubik's Cubes since they first came on the market in the late 1970s. Erno Rubik is 77 years old today. And happy birthday to Cheech Marin, one half of Cheech and Chong. He's 75 years old today. Somebody should probably tell him. 34 minutes after the hour, we're gonna take a break. Got an opinion from Mike Mad Dog Magnotti, and as we do it every week on Tuesdays, we talk Apple Sox baseball. Our guest this week, the voice of the Apple Sox, as always, Stormin' Joel Norman, and a uh, big, strong pitcher, Chase Grillo, joined us as well. That conversation is coming up. You're watching Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCW Life Channel. At Wenatchee Power Sports, we proudly offer the Polaris product line. Polaris builds the highest quality side-by-side -side in the industry with off-road capability that's second to none. 
Polaris pre-order program allows customers to purchase the vehicle they want without having to select from limited dealer inventory. The Wenatchee Valley has year-round access to some of the best ORV trails in the Northwest. Start your adventure here at Wenatchee Power Sports. What is home? A place to gather, a place to grow, provide shelter for the ones we love, eat, drink, restore, build trust. It's a place to rest when the work day is done, a place to find quiet after a night of good fun. What an honor we have at Guild to help own, finance, create, pave the way to live in home. For more than 56 years, Crown Furniture and Mattress has been serving North Central Washington with the same principles we were founded on. Offering the best quality, great value, incredible comfort, honesty, integrity, and of course, made in the USA. Because so much of our inventory is made in America, it has alleviated a lot of the shortages companies are experiencing nationwide. We are overstocked and ready to deliver. So stop by and see us today or visit us online at www.crownfurnitureandmattress.com. Hey folks, Carrie here from Blueberry Hills, here to welcome you back to all the delights of both indoor and outdoor dining. As things continue to normalize, you can expect the same great experience that's made Blueberry Hills a true family favorite for the last 20 years. We've added a few new items to the menu, but not to worry, because we're still serving up your old favorites too. So come on out to Blueberry Hills, where people fall in love at the very first bite. The 2021 Grant County Fair is happening August 17th through the 21st in Moses Lake. Check out the biggest ag-based fair in Washington State as kids show hundreds of animals. Or check out some of the more famous cuisine, such as Space Burgers or Block 40 Ice Cream. Friday night features country sensation Parmalee on the Brian Miller stage. Saturday, check out Grupo Control. Lots of music, food, animals, and of course, a huge carnival. Head to the website at gcfairgrounds.com. Green Motion e-bikes have rolled into Wenatchee. We've got fun, affordable e-bikes for the whole family. Portable e-bikes that fit right in the trunk of your car. Fat tire mountain bikes plus unique vintage style bikes you won't find anywhere else. Get some exercise with pedal assist or just cruise up to 20 miles per hour with the throttle. Starting under $1,000, Green Motion e-bikes are affordable fun for the whole family. Everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, a good pal of mine who was raised in the Catholic Church recently said that he feels that the Roman Catholic Church is little better than a criminal organization which is due to past abuses and specifically due to the way sexually abusive priests have been protected and their crimes covered up. That organization should be disbanded and eliminated. Well, I, I see his point and appreciate that he does speak as a member of that particular club, so to speak. There are many people for whom the Catholic Church is still their earthly means of connecting with God. And every church, big or small, has its problems. Now, of course they do. We humans run them. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. Chelan Wireless is your Verizon authorized retailer featuring the latest iPhone and Android devices. Personal or business, they have the plan and the customer service you're looking for. In these challenging times, Bear Foods is open and ready to help. From health to diet to home, we are here to take care of your needs. Bear Foods, the good food store. From home furnishings to the latest in home entertainment technology, deep water home and electronics can provide the selection and the connection for your wireless world. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere is your place for famous blues, brews, and barbecue. We are your one-stop bar and grill, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Hi, Justin here, owner of Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere. Looking for a fun night out? Join us at Club Crow. We have live bands to rock the night away, comedy to make you laugh, and if that's not enough, we have poker every Monday and Wednesday night. Club Crow in Cashmere has it all. Check out our Facebook event page for dates and times. Club Crow Bar and Grill in Cashmere, the coolest place in town. Today we're doing some employee development with our technicians. Today we're going to learn how to give a home a hug. It's not just a motto, but a unique way that Patriot technicians care for your home. Oh no, no, come on. You're 
really got to get in there and get your arms around it, give it a good embrace. All right, yeah, hey, good job. I think the training is going really well. Eating and cooling will give your home a hug. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Highlander Golf Course and Grill, located in East Wenatchee, offers terrific views and challenging play for golfers at every skill level. From the golf course to the grill, you don't need to be a member to dine in style and play golf too. Highlander's well-groomed fairways and greens keep it difficult, yet friendly for your regular rounds of golf or a new destination for you and your out-of-town friends. Contact the Highlander Pro Shop today to schedule your tee time, outing, or tournament. Open seven days a week, where everyone is welcome to play and eat. Contractors, furniture makers, and weekend do-it-yourselfers around North Central Washington will tell you that Lombard's Hardwood Supply is the place to get what you need. Lombard's Full Mill Workshop can handle jobs large or or small. Lombards has a full line of interior and exterior doors available, as well as custom barn doors. From alderwood to zebra wood and everything in between, it's Lombards Hardwood Supply on School Street in Sunny Slope. Like us on Facebook and check out our monthly special. Welcome back to Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Once a week, we check in with our friends at the Wenatchee Apple Sox. This week, in Apple Sox baseball after a, a pretty tough weekend with, uh, who's kidding here, the class of the league is Corvallis. They've, they've won uh, any number of league championships since they joined the West Coast League. Apple Sox played them tough, not quite tough enough as they got swept by the Knights, uh, including Joel Norman, a very tough loss on Sunday night. That one that one was a gut punch. It was a really good start for the team. You know, six one lead going into the sixth inning. A lot of reason to think this was gonna be the Apple Sox night, but you know, you tip your cap to your opponent, Corvallis, they've won four years in a row for a reason. They had a great comeback in this one, but I think there's a lot of things that the Sox can build off of from this one. Obviously, you would have loved to have had the win, but there's a lot of things you can build off of that you can be satisfied with. But you just got to turn that into victories moving forward. Guys are raking the ball pretty good. Offense really isn't much of an issue, is it, right no, now? No, it really feel, feels like they found their groove. There's been a lot of consistency. They just kind of got a little dry late in that ball game. I think there were only two hits in the final five innings last night, and that's something the coaching staff has preached before. It, you know, it's good to have these big innings, but let's sustain that offense throughout the whole night. I like your starting center fielder, who I got to know on Friday night because I was working the game and I had the center field camera and your center fielder on Friday night and I'm sorry I forgot who the heck it was. Who I'm believing it was Michael O'Hara. Yeah I think you're right. He was kind of coaching the guys out there as each guy came up to the plate. He said okay maybe a little shallower here a little more to the left here. He seems to have done his homework. He, yeah. uh, he was leading the outfield as, as a center fielder should do. And he got the start there again on Sunday. He's done a fantastic job at the plate and in the field. I think he, it was his third three hit game of the season already this past uh, evening on Sunday and he, he looks really good out there defensively. I, between him and Enzo Apodaca, you've got two center fielders in your outfield. I, for guys like Chase, that's got to be pretty exciting as defenders back there. Chase, introduce yourself to our television family. Hi, I'm Chase Grillo from Kennewick, Washington. So you're, are you a lion? Are you a brave? Are you a son? <laughs> I'm a brave. You're a brave. Yep. Okay. Way to go, my friend. Uh, little, tell, tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Uh, pretty basic background. Uh, grew up in Kennewick my whole life and then went to Spokane Falls for two years and then Redshirted at GU this past year. So you're a Gonzaga boy. Yep. Yep. And a good a good year for the Zags this year, wasn't it? Yes, they had a really good year. Uh, my roommate Alec Jacob was the star pitcher, so it was really great to get to learn from him and his mental approach. Uh, he talks a lot about visualization, and that was a big thing that I think kind of helps me out. And I learned that the other night. How did you end up on the Apple Sox roster? Talk about that recruiting process. Um, so I was supposed to come here before COVID hit, so I was going to be here last season. So stayed in touch with Coach Sanderson and was very fortunate for him to allow me the opportunity to come back. I know it's been a pretty rough stretch for you guys um, with, with the, the Corvallis uh, getting swept, but there's still a lot of baseball to be played. The thing I notice when, when I go to the games, you guys still seem to be having fun. You're taking the game seriously. You want to win, but you're also, you seem to be enjoying yourself. The team does. Yeah, you can't be too hard on yourself in baseball because then that's when things just start, start spiraling down. So we got to keep the positive attitude and 
the score might not sh reflect it all the time, but we're barreling balls and guys are competing every pitch. So eventually it's going to fall our way. It's just they get little dink hits here and there, and we can't really do much about that. It's just baseball. So just got to keep fighting our way. Paul Thomas Senior Stadium is a pitcher's park. It's got some of the biggest dimensions, if not the biggest dimensions in all of the West Coast League. But, Joel, we got guys who are poking the ball over the fence quite oh, sure a bit. We sure do. Dino Bethencourt has four home runs, and they're all here. It's just funny the way it's worked out. We've only hit two on the road this season. And it's not like we haven't played road games either, but for whatever reason, I think it's you know, the fan energy in a lot of ways. Little stuff like Tino coming up and fans chanting his name. I mean, he's talked about how much he loves that. So it's really important with the role that the fans play and success for the team. I think that's a big reason why we're seeing some big knocks here at home. you got some guys from basically all over all over the country have come to call Wenatchee home. You're a little lucky, though, because you, if you know, on the occasional off day, do you have a chance to go down to Kennewick and see family or head to Spokane and see some friends during the season, or are you still kind of in Wenatchee here for uh, most of the year? So most of the year I've been here. Uh, I did go home for the fourth for about a day, a little less, and got to hang out with family there. But other than that, it's just been here, go to the gym and work out with the guys and kind of build a team atmosphere and like you said like guys from all over the all over the country it's kind of a cool opportunity to get to gel and see their backgrounds and then make some lifelong friends you guys are hitting the road on tuesday morning off to bellingham give me uh give me the uh give me the the politics behind the seating in the bus uh first of all when Anchi valley shuttle they're great folks but what's the what's the protocol when it comes to who sits where on the bus and and that kind of stuff when it comes to the road trips and, and who's kidding who Bellingham's a pretty light trip compared to say yeah, Bend absolutely. or some other places yeah. what's the give me behind the scenes on a regular road trip with you guys uh, there's not much politics going on behind that it's more about just who gets here first and kind of first come first serve so it's kind of some people like sitting in the back of the bus some people like sitting in the front so I, I'm up close. I like being up there so then I can get my stuff, get off the bus for the game quick. So that's kind of my approach to it. Coach Sanderson always get to sit in the front seat by the driver. That's, that's usually the protocol. Yeah, those right to the things. right by the driver. He, <laughs> right. he gave a lot of directions on the way to Corvallis, as we remember <laughs> before, but uh, he's doing it all. And uh, personal entertainment, you guys do little games between the team, or you pretty much slap on the headphones and kind of zone out on those road trips? Uh, there's some jokes and stuff going on. Uh, hasn't been much games, but we're all just kind of get locked in for the game, especially as the hour before we get their approaches. So we kind of get set to go attack the new team. Uh, what are some of your favorite ballparks in the West Coast League? I know you haven't been with the league very far, and you haven't had too many road trips. Any because Civic Stadium, you're going to go in Bellingham, is, is gorgeous. It's, it's one of my field. favorite ballparks. You get that old, you feel like you're, you're stepping back into 1938 and playing baseball again in that beautiful structure. Any other park jumps out at you? Uh, that you like? Well, the Corvallis one, obviously, the Oregon State. I didn't get the opportunity to pitch there, but coming out of the bullpen after the game, it was like, wow, this looks a lot bigger coming out of the pen. But And then uh, Cowlitz, the LC field, I've played there before, and it's just cool, like little – reminiscent thing for me for juco is it hard to uh, adjust to playing on the field turf because uh, some of these parks as you just mentioned two of them right there it's artificial turf on the infield is it what's the, what's the adjustment there for you uh for me i don't have much of an adjustment uh there's a small bit on the mound if somebody's been kicking out the dirt so i kind of have to adjust to get a good footing but other than that pretty simple adjustment for me it's just hop on and just do what you need to do what's your out pitch my out pitch, uh, probably my slider right now. Okay, okay. What's your workload? Because uh, I know that, that Coach Sanderson is always in touch with your college coaches to make sure you don't go back to school in September with an arm that's falling off your shoulder. So w what's your workload like this summer? Are you on a really strict pitch count? Or if Coach Sanderson comes out and says, i got to pull you, and you say, hey, I feel good, please don't take me out, what's, walk me through that. Uh, it's pretty free for me uh, just going out and competing. So it's kind of just get as many innings as you can, pitch as much as you can. So. Pretty nice. Joel, your impressions of Chase so far this year? Really impressive. A guy with two pitches, his four-seamer and the slider, and he knows what to do with them. You know, I think at the beginning of the season, we would see a little bit of times you would miss a little bit inside or high, and he'll admit it too. But he's really settled down. I mean, he came in last on Sunday night, and he almost had an immaculate inning. That would have been nine pitches all for strikeouts. And he just missed it, but he still struck out the side. He's really settling into a late-inning reliever for the Apple Sox. Leads the team with three saves. And it's just fun watching him improve every single time he takes them out. I think that's been the most exciting thing. We're not seeing wild pitches here in July anymore. We're seeing a guy locked in. And, you know, he's nice as can be off the field. We're talking to he gets on the hill. We see him talking to himself. He's completely locked in. Different person out there. All Some business. sort of an alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> All business. Um, so uh, the, the first half is, is over. And, of course, we're now into the second half of the season. If you're unfamiliar, the West Coast League for a number of years splits the season up into two uh, two seasons, first half, second half, and then they move off 
into the playoffs. So we're off to Bellingham. That's right. How important is it uh, for you? And I'll ask you both these questions. I'll start with you, Joel. How, how important is it to get off to a, a, a good – maybe take two of three from the Bells? Oh, that's absolutely what needs to happen. You know, Bellingham, of course, being a division rival, they've always been. It's someone who you've got to take these games from because, uh, you know, you hope it to get one of three from Corvallis here. It didn't happen. But, you know, next team up, it's Bellingham, a team who – the Apple Sox did take two of three. They had a chance to sweep earlier this season. So now the tough part is going to Joe Martin Field. It's a place where the last two times the Apple Sox went there, they had to salvage the series. So two wins in their last six games there at Joe Martin. So it is a little tricky, but it's imperative. And I think this team is equipped to do it because they've had some success on the road. Road wins against Catlett's, Port Angeles. And I think a lot of times those can be a nice breath of fresh air going on the road, changing up the pace a little bit. They love playing at home, like I mentioned. That's obvious. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's just a change of pace. And like you talked about with those road trips and the bus rides, you know, that just brings the team closer together with each one that you go on. So I think this is a really exciting opportunity coming up this week for the Apple Sox. And yeah, they were swept by Corvallis, but I don't think that's something that's going to weigh on them once they're in Bellingham in a couple days. And you've already played Bellingham, so you have a general idea of the strengths and weaknesses of the club, right, Chase? Yes, yeah. We're going to come in and just attack, and we know our pitching can get the job done. Our hitters are going to step up to the plate. And like Joel is saying, uh, nothing like playing at home. You get the energy from the crowd, and that helps. But being on the road, there's nothing sweeter than beating somebody at their own place. Absolutely. I, lo I love it when the, the game is over after the bottom of the ninth and the crowd just gets up and leaves and the other yep. and the Apple Sox get to celebrate at the pitcher's mound. Uh, Joel, I'll give you the last word. Again, Bellingham, three games, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, back for some non-league games, including a game we'll have for you here on the NCAA Life Channel on a Friday night. Promotions and things that we need to know about over the next week and, of course, tickets. Yeah, so Bark in the Park night is coming up this coming Sunday, the first time we're ever having one. Uh, give us a call if you're wondering about any questions about that one, 665-6900. And uh, tickets on sale right now for that one. This coming Friday, when you guys broadcast, we're having an Apple Sox alum come back, and he'll throw out the first pitch. Johnny Sage will be on hand. Oh, good. So, yeah, we got to see Dalton Harum last yeah. Friday night, which was great. Yeah, that was really it was nice to have him. He's a Wenatchee native, too, so that helped out. But, you know, we love seeing the alums come back. Just if They can just take in a game and go out there and throw out the first pitch. It's going to be a fun weekend against the CCL. And, you know, we look to try and keep building some momentum and keep moving forward and get closer to that playoff spot. Joel Norman and Chase, good luck. Hey, good to see you, my friend. Go Zags, yeah. right? Thanks right? for having us. Yep. Yeah, anytime. Uh, have a good, safe road trip, and Joel, we'll see you Friday night, all right? Thank you, Dan. All right, you're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We'll be right back. You know, I have different people in the community come up and tell me that they've seen our commercial. I took my family up to Yodelin, up in Leavenworth, and we walk in, and it's a Monday night, so Monday night football is playing, and all of a sudden, our commercial starts airing and my kids couldn't believe it. They're like, dad, you are on Monday Night Football. This is unbelievable. You know, we know somebody famous. They, like my respect level just went way up in my kids' eyes. We have over the last year realized how important Apple Blossom is, how important those Friday football games are. And being a part of that community and being able to support those activities happening is very important to us. One of our real passions as uh, as a business is to serve our community well and at the same time promote our brand and I feel like NCW Life uh, allows you to do that with some of the different opportunities that they give you. There's ways to help us build community while at the same time promoting your brand. Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Lakeshland Mailboxes is a small place with a lot to offer. Job one is shipping and receiving from A to Z. They pack it, they label it, they ship it. But did you know we also offer notary service, online computer access, legal forms, copies, greeting cards, and of course mailboxes, even passport photos. Chelan Mailboxes is everything you need in one small package. Make being home fun again. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa has just what you need to bring fun back into your backyard. We have a wide selection of artesian spas and swim spas, new and used to choose from. We are happy to announce we are now selling Rainbow Kids Play Structures with 50 models to choose from. 
To help finish off your entertainment area, we have patio furniture and Komodo Joe grills. At Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, we have just what you need to bring family fun and entertainment to your backyard. Stop by today. Tipsy Canyon Winery has become the place to go for fine wine and unbelievable views of the Chelan Valley. And now there's even more to enjoy. A new bandstand hosts live music every Thursday night during the spring and summer. The oversized fire pit's a favorite gathering place in the fall and winter. Tipsy Canyon has become a year-round destination for wine lovers. And while things have changed, what remains the same is that at-home feel provided by Mark, Tammy, and Lexi Garvin. Stay for the moment that becomes the memory at Tipsy Canyon. Right, let's uh, wrap a little bow on this Tuesday edition of Wake Up in H Valley. We have a few moments, so we thought we'd take another tour around the smoky and hazy north central Washington area. As you can see, the haze and the smoke have really began to work their way down. Uh, the fire that's closest to us is called the Varden Fire. That's about 10 miles west of Mazama, about 20 miles west of Winthrop, where, by the way, the air quality there is not very good. And since we're under that influence of that high pressure system with the heat advisory, there's really no place for the smoke and the haze to go. So it's going to be pretty hazy, really, right through the rest of the week and into the weekend as we look out over the Wenatchee Valley from our cross camera. I believe we're using the same cameras uh, that we did an hour ago. So we're back up to the Chelan Butte camera. It doesn't look quite as hazy now as it did an hour ago. We're looking out over the Waterville Plateau. So that's the Columbia River down below. You can't quite uh, make it out. That's from the Chelan Butte. The top of the Chelan Butte pointing almost directly to the east, to the Waterville area. Camera number three looks something like this. I believe we're back to Steins in Kashmir. And there we are pointing directly to the east towards the Wenatchee Valley. You can see the golf course and the fairgrounds and the orchards doing their job and doing it well. Good morning to Kashmir. Good to see you. And finally, up to Billy Goats and the Omak Okanagan area. Yuck. Right now, the uh, air quality index, I got the Washington Air Monitoring Network up here on my computer. The uh, air quality in OMAC proper is at 156 ppm, and that puts them in the unhealthy category in OMAC. Uh, Twist beer at 153, also unhealthy, and in Winthrop proper, uh, you're at uh, 120 ppm, uh, and that makes you unhealthy for sensitive groups, and with the fires burning not only up uh, in the Mazama area, but also in the Inchilium area, that's gonna get pretty bad. Pretty thick smoke up there. And again, it's gonna slowly ease its way down here to the Wenatchee Valley. We still have that heat advisory, but now we're also gonna be dealing with a fire weather watch. Take a look at the map of where you live. Uh, it goes into effect Wednesday afternoon, goes through Thursday evening. What's gonna happen here is we're gonna have a cold front come through. So we're gonna have some increased wind, very low relative humidity, especially in the afternoons tomorrow and on Thursday as the cold front moves in on Thursday. The good news, the relative humidity will go up in some areas, but the bad news, the winds will be picking up in intensity. So it's that mixture that we don't like to see. Low relative humidity, warm temperatures, strong winds, any kind of fire that's either already burning or gets going during the fire weather watch period could really get moving. Hopefully keep our fingers crossed there. If you're just joining us, we have now gone 26 consecutive days with our afternoon high above normal. The coolest afternoon high we have had this summer since the summer solstice, 90 degrees. Our normal high, 87 degrees. Yes, if people say, is it me or has it been a hotter than normal summer? It's been a hotter than normal summer by far. From the National Weather Service, here we go again. Lots of haze, lots of smoke will be in the triple digits, probably right around 103 or 104, 105, not out of the question. When we get a little hazy, it has a tendency to not make the temperatures go as warm as they predicted. 69 for the overnight low. Wind will be picking up a little bit in intensity tonight. No real wind on Wednesday, still hot. Then the cold front comes in Thursday. As you can see, we're, our temperatures are going to drop down to the upper 80s. Now keep in mind that 87 degree mark that you see on Friday, that is our normal high temperature. That's our normal high temperature, so it might feel considerably colder, but it's actually where we should be this time of the year. And then we warm right back up again. And the one prevalent uh, weather phenomenon is going to happen all this week and into the weekend, as long as those fires are burning and the high pressure ridge is here. Going to be hazy and smoky for pretty much everybody. That's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.